What's happening with Star Wars Hunters? I'm going to be answering that question in this video because there is so much to discuss. From season 4 being delayed and not very good communication to major changes coming to the game, some unfortunate layoffs and just how poorly the game is doing in terms of money and players. But before we do get into all of that and more, make sure you do subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any future Star Wars Hunters videos, including Season 4, which is still coming out. Firstly, I want to talk about what is actually happening in the game right now. So there is a Halloween event that has been going on called the Shadow Knight Festival, and it has some really awesome themed cosmetics in the store, which do look great. And you can also pick a free Gorax or Dulox sticker. It's pretty cool to see those in Star Wars Hunters. I went with the Gorax personally. It is not the greatest Halloween event, but considering the other Star Wars games that didn't get a single Halloween themed event, I'll take this. Moving on to the drama that is the Season 4 delay and Season 3 extension. So in case you aren't aware, Season 3 of Star Wars Hunters was set to be the shortest season yet. A few weeks shorter than before with less tiers in the Arena Pass to accommodate, and it was supposed to end on either November 5th or 6th, so next week. However, players noticed earlier this week that the timer on the Arena Pass had been extended by a few weeks, taking us to like the 25th, 26th of November. Now this wouldn't be as big of an issue if Zynga gave us a heads up that this was happening and then gave us their reasoning for it. However, it was radio silence for like a day. There was literally zero communication from the official channels or any of the employees that this had been extended and why. Many of the hardcore players of this game have completed the Arena Pass for Season 3 and they are just left waiting for something to do, but there is no new content expected for the remainder of this season that has now been extended to the normal length. Whilst this isn't a huge deal to me personally and it's actually a good thing because I haven't completed the Arena Pass yet, but I can understand the frustrations of the more dedicated players of the game and my main issue with this is just the lack of communication. Thankfully, Kavari, who is one of the developers on Star Wars Hunters, he works on the marketing team, but is basically the de facto community manager at this point, even though they don't actually have one. He said on the Discord that apologies for the delay in communicating with you on this. We appreciate everyone in the community asking questions about this. We're extending Echoes of the Rebellion season to prepare for changes in Star Wars Hunters. The Arena Pass and Rank season will remain active during this time, and new events will be added to the schedule. We'll be doing our best to answer your questions on this. So great that it gives more people time to complete the Arena Pass and rank up in Ranked, which is certainly what I'm going to be doing as well. And there are changes coming to the game, and that's the reason why they are delaying it. That's totally fine, understandable, but the lack of communication just is not good enough and this is a message from one employee in the Discord server. It wasn't announced in the game, it wasn't announced on Twitter or Instagram or wherever. It's just so frustrating because the communication for this game has always been poor. The official Star Wars Hunters account on Discord did actually put out a post saying they have extended it and they're extending it for those changes and stuff like that. Basically a copy paste of what Kavari did say. Now the official Star Wars Hunters Twitter account did not make a main tweet about this extension but they have been responding to people saying that we are sorry for any mix up about the Echoes of Rebellion being extended. This decision is important for ensuring a smooth transition for the upcoming changes in the game. During this period both the Arena Pass and Rank Season will remain active blah blah blah. So the question remains, what are these changes they are talking about? They're obviously big enough for them to delay a new season, right? Now, it could be something on the developer side of things, something that we may not necessarily see front and centre to start off with, or it could be some significant mechanic changes, things like that, that we will actually notice. Hopefully we do get a detailed explanation about this very soon, and Hopefully, we do actually get a console and PC release, but I'm not holding out too much hope for that. But I do think that's the Smash class to save this game thing that really needs to happen soon. More on that later on in the video. I know some people were very upset that there will be no new tiers and stuff like that in Season 3, but it makes sense. They did not foresee an extension in the season and didn't have content prepared to just rush out as extra tiers. 
Someone asked, can you tell us anything about these upcoming changes? And Kvara did respond and say, I can't say too much right now, but you will get some big updates soon. So hopefully they do let us know in the next week or so. I really hope it's as soon as possible so they've got time to give us the information and we can potentially give our feedback on it before it just suddenly drops in season four. But just another mark on the communication front is the Twitter account because it is active, but it's an AI, basically, I'm pretty sure, because there was this tweet about Vader's castle, just a generic tweet about Vader's castle, nothing to do with the game, and the official Star Wars Hunters account responded to it saying, right now we have yet to receive any updates regarding its return to the game, rest assured we'll forward your feedback to the developers. What? Like, uh, why? What? This is just embarrassing. It's just embarrassing for a game that has been embarrassed by communication problems since its inception. <sighs> I've been rooting for this game and this team, but Zynga, who are just doing things their way, the mobile way, they don't realise that a lot of their audience, I think, are actual Star Wars gaming console and PC players that aren't used to this level of incompetency. In regards to the next Hunter, someone did ask Kavari about them and he said stay tuned for updates on this. We're working on some really cool things and can't wait to share with you all. So I'm excited about that. I hope it's a different type of rollout with more content and potentially behind the scenes stuff like they did with Char all the way back earlier this year. So please give us more stuff like that. It's really awesome. So you're probably wondering, do we have any indication what this new Hunter is? Because they are all really cool characters and I'm excited to find out who is next. Well, there have been two Hunters that have been leaked thanks to the Star Wars Hunters Leaks Discord for finding them out. There is a Twi'lek called Tuya and an unnamed Kubaz. This is the race of the Imperial Spy, Garandan, who we know from A New Hope. For me, I'm much more interested in this species of character because we don't really get them too much in Star Wars media. They are mysterious, they look cool, rather than just another Twi'lek that appear in so much Star Wars stuff. There's always a chance that these hunters don't ever come out, they were scrapped, or have just been delayed because these are from developer portfolios. So they've been in the works for a long time, but who knows if they actually ever will release. What we do know officially, however, is this small story from Star Wars Hunters, which popped up in-game this week. So basically, they do these teasers before a new Hunter is out, if you didn't know, and this is what they had to say. So, details on the new Hunter. There is not too many details, but one insider did claim that they noticed the Hunter was carrying a type of weapon we have yet to see in the game yet. And it was also claimed that Ballada the Hut and the Hunter visited Ballada's office where she showed off one of her rarest finds, an Antarian butterfly, a poisonous creature long thought to be extinct. This is actually a Star Wars Legends creature from Star Wars 1997, the original comic. So very early on into Star Wars. Perhaps this is relevant to the Hunter, but who knows? So season three was set to end just as the financial quarter for Take to Interact Who Own Zynga ends. So they probably wanted to get it in just before that quarter ends and start from fresh. But obviously now we know it has been extended and the next season has been delayed. Well, I want to discuss Take Two's comments before they do actually do talk about the game possibly again on November 6th during their next financial call. In the previous quarter, Take Two said that they are very happy with Star Wars Hunters and it's had a really good start and there will be more content which ended up being season three. And I'm very interested to see what Take Two has to say now we know that the game doesn't look to be doing too well. More details later on in the video. As for how the game is doing in terms of how much money it's making and downloads, there are some analytics companies in the mobile space that are considered trustworthy to an extent that give estimations of how games are doing. And it's not looking good for Star Wars Hunters because last month it had just 100,000 downloads on iOS and it made $100,000. And you might think $100,000, that's a lot of money. It is. But in comparison to Zynga's other titles, it is nothing. For example, a game that had the same amount of downloads earned 500,000, whereas the other titles made millions and had, again, just add a few hundred thousand downloads. Now that's on the iOS side. What about the Android side? And 
It's even worse. There was just 30,000 downloads with $50,000 made. Now, if you look at the other titles, yes, some of them are slot machine casinos, which is not good. You can just see how much money they make. They have, you know, 40 to 50,000 downloads and make millions. One of the good things about Star Wars Hunters is the lack of its egregious monetization. It's really good. There are no ads. It's all cosmetic rewards, basically, aside from the hunters that are in new arena passes. But again, they are cheap and aren't necessarily overpowered. There are now loot boxes in the game, which is really highly priced and not great. That said, if it's to keep the game to survive and it's not pay to win, it may have to be necessary. But look at what it's competing against. Other mobile games that are just simply gambling, which is just bad. Now those aren't Star Wars titles, right? But let's talk about the biggest Star Wars mobile game, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, which is on a big trajectory downwards right now. It's making a lot less money than it did a couple of years ago, but it's still making millions because just last month it made $2 million on iOS for EA with 200,000 new downloads. So even though this game is actually declining in money made, it's still got 200,000 installs last month. And this is sort of in the region of other EA titles as well, which are just raking in money. Of course, these are mostly just estimates, but have been trusted by many people in the industry to be decently accurate. Not always accurate and spot on, but there is something to be said there. One thing to remember here is that there is no Nintendo Switch numbers for how many people are playing it and how many people have spent money on it. Though it's not really in the top charts on Nintendo Switch, and I just get the feeling the kind of people playing a free-to-play game on the Nintendo Switch aren't willing to put up money, as opposed to those playing on mobile. The Switch is more of a family game sort of system with children playing on it, as opposed to the people that are spending the money on the Discord server and stuff like that. So unfortunately, there has been some layoffs at Zynga. So specifically Natural Motion. So Natural Motion is the company that own Boss Alien, and Boss Alien are who actually make Star Wars Hunters, and Natural Motion only opened up a new Birmingham-based studio this year, and it's being completely shut down already in just a few months. So Zynga are doing some cost-cutting, because Take-Two have asked them to do some cost-cutting, because they're cutting various jobs here and there, and it's just such a shame that a brand new studio has just been shut down, even if it was a small one, a support studio for CSR2 and probably Star Wars Hunters. According to AppMagic, Star Wars Hunters has had about 4.3 million downloads so far and just 2.4 million revenue minus the 30% platform fees. Zynga did confirm that yes, the studio was shut down and all the corporate speak that they're trying to align future development goals, stuff like that. But in reality, it's never good when people get laid off in this industry and it's happened so much in the past year and two. It's very sad to see. We do know that some people who worked on Star Wars Hunters were laid off, at least, for example, this QA lead. It does not seem like this was the main core Hunters team, but rather than just extra staff that may have been part of that Birmingham side. He said that the day of worldwide release of Star Wars Hunters was incredible. Seeing millions of people playing the game it had so much meaning for me. To spend so much time in the struggle making game is one thing, but the moment for its release is such an incredible vindication. Regardless of my future, I know that Hunters is a game enjoyed by its community tremendously, and that's what matters. It's not all doom and gloom, though, to an extent, because there is actually still an active job listing for a principal character artist on the Star Wars Hunters team, which is great but that's the only job open right now. They've obviously hired some people more recently, but, you know, before the game came out, they were hiring a lot of people, which, again, makes more sense than where it is now, but still, if the game was growing dramatically to get more content out, they would be hiring a lot more people. So that's Star Wars Hunters at this moment in time. It's not going great, but it deserves a lot of love because the game is made with quite a bit of love. The cosmetics, the lore, the deep cuts is really, really good. Like, they've done stuff that we've not seen before, and it's really, really sad if this game gets shut down because there is no way of preserving all of this stuff. We're just going to lose so much of this awesome content, and that is going to be a real shame because a lot of effort is going into this game, but it doesn't seem like they know how to actually market this game. I think the way this game can survive is if they do put out a console version and have new content ready to go for it. So I, if I had to guess, it's probably doing okay on Switch, but not to a great extent. They need to put out that PlayStation and Xbox version, I think. 
to really give it one last shot at a potential long future. I'd love to hear your thoughts on anything I've talked about in this video. Please do let me know down in the comment section below. And remember to drop a like to help support the channel. Subscribe so you don't miss any future news updates on Star Wars Hunters. And stay tuned for Season 4, which is going to be dropping soon. And I'm looking forward to seeing what it is going to be themed around. Click on the playlist if you missed any of my previous videos. And I shall see you in my next video. Goodbye.